Hi, this is Steve Endo, and today I'd like to take a look at Web Services in Dynamics 365 Financials. I'd like to briefly cover how to configure them, and then just demonstrate some things I've seen poking around the URLs. I haven't yet found any documentation for the 365 for Financials API. I see some documentation on the CRM side, but not so much on the NAV financial side, but I'm still looking. But uh, from what I found, uh, let's start with the web services configuration. So in the search box, go to web services, and you'll see a list of the available web services that have been set up. And some of these were out of the box with the Cronus company, and I set up several more. And one thing I noticed while setting them up is first that a object type of page appears to be helpful for data retrieval whereas code unit appears to be more function related. So it's a method or a function that occurs. And queries, I'm assuming those are more like uh, data view type operations. So if you want to retrieve item sales and profit, that's more like a combined data view. So for now, I'm just going to focus on pages. And past that, you'll notice with the object IDs and object names, interesting that there's something called a customer card and then there's something called customers and i'll show the example of some data behind each of those and my interpretation of it not coming from the nav world this is all new to me so i'm just kind of discovering what data shows up and what it might mean and then there are a few that i don't quite understand here so for instance there's items 31 item card 30 but then there's items lowercase 5470 which seems to be in a different world and it also has this all tenants box checked so um, i'm guessing that might be uh, some type of different view so with that let's set up a vendors um, api really quick so let's go to page and you'll notice i already have vendor card but let's see if we can find vendors so i'm going to select from full list so that i have the search function and vendors and so similar to items we have a vendors and then we have a lowercase vendors so i'm going to go for 27 vendors there and we have to give it a name and then i'm going to publish and then once you leave the line the urls are built and the urls are pretty consistent it's basically the same root url with this appended on the end so whatever you call your service name that's essentially your endpoint name and that seems to be a, a clue as the underlying structure in that it's not necessarily a pure REST API with full discoverability. It's more like these are um, semi-RPC endpoints. So um, something to keep in mind. So with that said, here are the URLs, and there's three types. There is an OData version 4 URL, OData URL, and SOAP URL, and I'll show the difference that I'm seeing in those. If you take some of these URLs and you paste them into a browser, I'm testing on Chrome because it has the extensions that help with viewing, and I'm using two different extensions. This extension for the JSON data is JSON view, and then for XML data, I'm using an extension called XML tree. That seems to work well. I tried a few others, but this one's simple. It worked, so that's what I'm using. So let's start with this first tab. You'll notice that this is OData v4. Let's just talk about the different um, URLs that are available. So OData v4 is JSON data format. So it's the more modern format. It's what I would expect nowadays. Uh, pretty straightforward. Next up, we have the older OData format, and this is an XML format. And I haven't looked closely at it, but it does appear to have some information which is kind of nice about the url parameters i'll have to give that a try and it actually does include the data in the nodes so it is returning data whereas if you go to the web service url on 7047 msws this appears to be more of a schema definition like an xsl and so you have your types and these other nodes, but there's no actual customer data in this. So 
I'm not an expert on SOAP, um, the underlying SOAP uh, architecture and the data that goes back and forth. So this is a little foreign to me, but it's not particularly helpful when you're having to browse the data like this, that's for sure. So that's the observation on V4 versus regular O data versus web services. For my work that I'll be doing poking around and trying to integrate with 365 financials, it looks like I'll likely be using the V4, OData V4, which appears to be the newest um, REST-based API. So let's start with this. This is a customer's URL, and the customers versus customer card appears to be a way to retrieve a list of customers. So um, I'll need to check in the filtering options on this, but in this case, we see that it retrieved five customers, six customers here. And it's a lightweight list, 30-some uh, uh, data elements are being returned here. Whereas if we go to the customer card, you'll notice it looks like there's probably around 100 elements being returned here. And so it's more detailed address information, tax information. Um, so it's the more complete customer record. And in this case, just the customer card URL will retrieve the full customer list. So it'll probably be potentially heavy and you'll want to filter. So I need to figure out how to filter and parameters. And this um, gave me a clue, this OData one, it looks like it's being passed in as a, a parenthetical parameter to customers. So let's just give that a try. Customers 30,000. Let's see if that works on the OData v4. So we'll do parentheses, apostrophes, and look at that. So I just discovered something. So that's how you add a single parameter. I'll have to figure out how to do a range or if it supports ranges. But um, there you go. So your root customers will provide a list of all. And then from there, you do parentheses and apostrophes around your customer number. And that'll retrieve your single record. Good to know. So customers is the shortened data set. Customer card is the full data set. And similar, we have items and then item card. So here you see the item is just a handful of fields. And then item card is everything for that item. Pretty full field listing. So thought that was interesting. Pretty easy to retrieve the data, view it in a browser, and figure out uh, what data you need, what fields you need to map. And so that's a quick overview of the Dynamics 365 Financials Web Services, or at least uh, what I've figured out so far. Hope that was helpful.